Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and that little in-the-can introduction was made by our very own Joel Baer, General Manager here at Missoula Community Access Television. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. We have a lot of stuff to talk about on our show. We got Flagship Friday, we got Teen Talk, we got Pre-Critic with me, talking about all these new movies that come out and pre-judging them before you actually even see them. Um, you get... Uh, uh, I have events, your city council, where they're talking about the Smith River. Um, and finally, we got uh, Mark Moss on here, and he's um, going to be uh, talking about tell us something. I'm always trying to find the right words to say. You can't say tell us something about tell us something. I'm trying to find a new word. So, you know, I'm going to invest in the thesaurus a little bit more. Uh, so he's talking about the unlikeliest of places. And... Um, yeah, we'll hear from him later in the show, but right now we're going to talk about weather because today uh, is very serendipitous for me, a big word I like to use, because the snow is very nice, and as I like to say about uh, snow in the morning, um, snowboarders, uh, um, I mean, I, I think the idea is, for me, I'm trying to make up a new saying, it's a... Uh, um, Fresh snow at night, uh, snowboarders delight, and fresh snow in the morning, drivers take warning, because um, however you guys drive, just drive five miles below how you usually drive, and I think you guys should be fine in terms of winter driving. It is currently 12 degrees outside. You can expect the high to be 22 degrees. It doesn't feel that cold, but it's pretty nice. So um, if you want to go outside and do any uh, winter activities, uh, today would be that day. Be because by the time the weekend rolls through and it's all done, you can expect all that snow to be all gray and disgusting and underneath your cars. Um, but of course, uh, it is um, freshly uh, fallen snow, so let's talk about some of the, uh, um, on this, oh wait, that was Wake Up Missoula sign. Sorry about that. That Here is <laughs> the weather report. Sorry, I'm like doing many things at once. Here is your basic format of your forecast, 12, day, 12 degrees right now. You have 70% chance of snow. 90% um, tonight, and then of course throughout through the weekend, uh, it will basically snow all weekend long. So you can check all that out by going to the nationalweatherservice.gov. And of course, um, Whitefish, Montana, um, Whitefish um, Mountain Ski Resort, uh, they got about uh, 13 to 48 inches of snow across their mountain. It's gonna, it looks pretty nice. Uh, Big Sky Resort had 17 to 26 inches. Uh, Bridgeable is 24 all around. Um, let's see, let's go to Showdown, Montana. Um, two to five inches, not too much. A lost trail, uh, you, uh, they don't really have anything available. But of course, uh, I'll tell you guys more as we go into it. But of course, uh, most of our neighbors to the north have some freshly uh, fallen snow. But of course, you can expect most of the snow to ha be happening throughout uh, the Missoula area. Let's talk about news. Let, what, what's going on? Um, Missoula, um, if you haven't read in the newspaper or haven't seen on the Missoula.com, um, with the long-awaited acquisition of Mountain Water Company, the city hopes to acquire a loan in hopes to acquire Mountain Water Company. Um, with two court cases, um, willing that one telling um, um, Carlisle to sell to Missoula, and the other one to come up with a fair price um, in which Carlisle highballed Missoula to $150 million, which um, Missoula did about $55 million, thinking about that was being fair, and then of course they went down the middle to 88 or about 80 some million dollars for the uh, final um, um, sales price of Mountain Water Company. And now the state of Missoula's looked at the budget, looked through all this stuff, and they're looking to get a short-term loan, which will be about 2% interest rate, rather than going for a long-term loan, which will be uh, about twice that, which would be a 4% interest loan. And they hope to hopefully pay off this loan within two years. Um, in Montana, if you haven't already heard, uh, thousands of geese landed on the famous Berkeley Pit, or should I say infamous Berkeley Pit. Um, Los Angeles headline said, why are thousands of geese dying from a toxic pit? Hmm, couldn't be that toxic pit, right? No. Um, so of course, basically a bunch of geese um, fighting the Arctic storm a couple days ago found refuge in the Berkeley Pit. And needless to say, a bunch of them died. Um, what beats a uh, tourist trap of ecological disasters, what brings people to say that and be like, oh, at least our ecological disaster isn't as bad as this one, um, now has become a PR nightmare for people in Butte, uh, people who and trying to draw tourism to Butte, um, proving that the only way to get things in emotion is to have a disaster. 
<laughs> but of course, I'm going to stop before I get a little biased because I am biased. Um, uh, but I'm also from Missoula. So anyways, uh, here is a little bit of world news. John Glenn, American astronaut, dies at 95. Uh, since uh, 1962, uh, John Glenn was chosen to be um, the first man to orbit uh, the Earth. And he did that three times. And the word he would describe it as beautiful when he orbited the um, the planet Earth. And they made a movie about him um, starring Ed Harris in which Glenn... Um, John Glenn has never met Ed Harris, who played him in a movie. Uh, that's a nice little side note. Um, in world news, uh, pre um, president of South Korea, uh, the first female president of South Korea, um, this is uh, Park uh, Gen-hai, she was impeached uh, as South Korean president um, after a 2014 ferry disaster, which uh, kind of helped perpetuate the um, government corruption and incompetence of that party. Uh, 234 uh, party leaders voted in favor of impeachment, while 56 voted against. Um, she was the first female leader. Prime Minister uh, Hwang Kion will assume leadership of South Korea. And of course, I got this from Fox World News. And that pretty much uh, is all you need to know about what's happening in the world right now. But of course, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice or made you write out all that wonderful stuff. You could uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can like us on Facebook. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also go to mcat.org. Tomorrow is our Saturday drop-in animation. If you guys don't want to enjoy some winter wonderland that is um, now and throughout the weekend, you guys can come join us at 500 North Higgins. Come inside. Um, um, it's for kids aged 9 to 13, and they can do stop motion um, short. You know, stay warm, make a stop animated movie, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. $10 uh, for, per drop-in, four hours of fun. All sorts of great stuff here at MCAT. You can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. Or you can email us, mcat at mcat.org. I swear we'll get back to you. Um, up next, we have um, Mark Moss coming on, talking about Tell Us Something. So I have a nice little video. And when we come back, Mark Moss will be right with us. So how many of you uh, subscribe to the podcast? How many of you hear a very recognizable laugh every time? That's the one. Marissa France, everybody, she's our gong timekeeper. <laughs> Thanks, Marissa. I want to make a podcast of like three minutes of her laughing. <laughs> thanks again to the Wilma, thanks to the Trail, thanks to the bookstore at the University of Montana, and thanks to the Top Hat for their years and years of support. All right, here you see uh, Mark Moss uh, telling us something about uh, Tell Us Something. Um, he's doing a little intro, and you were talking about the uh, uh, doing a nice little uh, podcast uh, for that uh, lady in the audience who always comes to your show. And oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> Marissa France. Yeah. Yeah. But you, uh, you guys, uh, you're excited for this new Tell Us Something that's happening uh, next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Right. So uh, tell us, uh, what... Um, what kind of, what's the topic this time? Um, Tuesday, it is the unlikeliest of places. Doors open at six at the Wilma. Um, the show starts at seven. We have eight storytellers. We'll have the audience participation um, feature as well. Um, so people will be able to anonymously share their own stories and drop them in a little box and we'll pick some of those out and read them right after intermission. Cool. Um, um, do you know any of the uh, um, speakers? Oh yeah, I know all of the speakers, and I never announce the storytellers ahead of time because I want people to come and listen to their community tell a story instead of saying, "Oh, uh, Ira Glass is going to be there. I'm definitely going to that. Oh, Scott's going to be there. I'm not going." <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah, because you don't want to have a bias of exactly. the people. You just want to just like surprise people with um, nice and fun stories. And this topic is the unlikeliest of places. Yes. So, so uh, what what does this um, topic mean? Um, could mean a lot of different things. The unlikeliest of places where you found your keys. I found them in the freezer. Or the unlikeliest of places where you uh, might have to talk about um, Missoula iconic restaurant, like four B's, uh, to get you out of trouble. <laughs> um, so, stuff like that, and who knows? We could, we could see a lot of different things, yeah. Um, but one of the really exciting things that I wanted to talk about, about Tuesday, besides Tell Us Something itself, there's a new service that we're offering. So parents can drop off their children 
aged 6 to 16, at the former Raven Cafe over on Broadway, the public house. Coach Shane and Zach Morris from Learn, Inc. will be providing youth storytelling workshops for children ages 6 to 16. Wow. So parents can drop off their kids at 6 o'clock and pick them up after Tell Us Something is over at 10. Cool. And it's a great way to uh, um, encourage families to come down to Tell Us Something. Yeah. If uh, you have a, you know, like, if you can't, if you don't need a babysitter, um, then it's a good uh, excuse to bring them on down and maybe they pick up a new skill along the yeah. way. Or, you know, public speaking is, like, literally on the top of the, the toppest, most fears of people. It's like public speaking and then death. Right. It, so it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. So it's, uh, it's <laughs> people would rather die than do public speaking. But yeah. these people are here in front of a wide audience at, uh, of course, um, if we take a look, here is the venue. Here yeah. is, uh, um, this is uh, tellussomething.org, where yeah. you can find more information, and of course, all the other past Tell Us Somethings as well. You can right? stream all of the old stories, uh, that I've, all of the stories that have ever been told on the Tell Us Something stage. Go to tellussomething.org to get tickets for the event and also to reserve your slot for your child over at um, the public house. Cool. Is there anything else you wanted to add about Tell Us Something? That's it. Um, we have brand new hoodies on sale. Uh, that will, I just picked them up uh, two days ago over at Sioux City Apparel. So the hoodies will be available as well as CDs and pint glasses and purchase a hoodie and get a free t-shirt. All right, let's, let's take a quick little look at that and zoom in. There's a nice little uh, patch right there of Tell Us Something. Yeah. Really cool design. Um, who uh, helped design it? Great, great zipper. Um, Haley Faust designed the logo, and I adapted it to the one color design so that we can print that. And of course, you always have the t-shirt on underneath. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. <Yep. laughs> yeah. So buy a hoodie, get a free t-shirt. Nice. Yeah. Great. Oh, thanks for joining me. And um, you guys, check out the Unlikeliest of Places, um, hosted by Tell Us Something, at the Woma Theater, starting at 7 p.m. next Tuesday. That's right, on December 13th. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, we'll be right back right after the uh, all these new programs that are happening on MCAT. <laughs> based on personal stories of underrepresented students in their respective disciplines in ecology and talking and, and, and they're very personal quotes of you know how they feel either included or not included um, whether or not they can whether they ha have to walk in the door and forget that you know as one was as one woman said you know black lives matter another another black person shot by a, a white officer is a tiny voice in my head and for me to be able to just for me for them to expect me to drop that voice in my head when I walk through the office door, that's all of a sudden saying that what you wanted for me from a diverse experience is no longer valuable once I walk in and do my science. And that allowed me to develop new passions. Uh, one thing that I'm very proud of is that before I went to Mali, I didn't really know how to cook. Uh, I would, you know, kind of just get something out of a box or, um, you know, get pre-prepared food. And when I was in Mali uh, and starting to talk to people about healthy nutrition, I realized that I had to embody that myself. So I learned to cook from scratch. And three years after, you know, joining the Peace Corps, I could, you know, do everything from make a, a simple meal to, you know, a very complex meal for many friends. And that's something that I carry with me now and uh, that, you know, now I'm able to cook purely from my Peace Corps experience.
We've been really lucky that as we've been implemented this project, um, a lot of our neighbors have gained a lot of interest in doing work on their private lands. Steve Siebert and Jill Belsky have been doing work on their property for years, since the early 2000s, and have really paved the way for a lot of the, the great community discussions and allowed us to, to connect and, and really work together to make more effective fuels treatments that works well on both private lands as well as on forested landscapes. I'm really honored to be here. I mean, I never expected to do this. I think there was only one really serious thunderstorm and being in the lookout and getting blasted by lightning, the lookout was struck by lightning. Just a huge white flash and a great big crash. What we were told at the time is just simply never get between the, the big cook stove and the fire finder because the electricity could easily arc and when it really got bad I climbed back on the bunk <laughs> and stayed low. All right, so that was all you new programming. If, if you checked out the last part of the programming, that was restoration projects. There's a bunch of little short videos on MCAT. If you go to MCAT.org, you can go into channel 189. It'll pop up this nice little page. You can see entire schedule. And this is these are some of the programs that I'll be having throughout the weekend. And you can check out any of these. And if you see, uh, let's see, if you see a green play button right here oops there you go a green play button that means that has a video ready to play at any given time so you can watch anytime on MCAT.org all you gotta do is you click on the link channel 189 and you basically can even type in what you want to see so if you want to see presidential lecture series you type in little presidential or president and then you just hit search and then it goes to the presiden presidential lecture series because it's the only thing on MCAT with the word presidential and of course you might maybe you might see a couple of little, like anti-Trump rallies Missoula thing because it is Missoula anyways moving on <laughs> uh, it's time for pre-critic so let's talk about some of the new movies that are coming out and let me get my cheat sheet here's pre-critic Welcome, this is uh, with an ever endearing couple on screen, Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, but this time they are singing. Join us, join this tale of two young kids trying to make a big in LA while falling in love at the same time in this love letter to the city that is all about movies and movie magic, Los Angeles. Um, most likely will be nominated and expect Oscars to be patting themselves on the back for this musical inspired by Los Angeles, AKA the whale's toenail. Um, next up, we got Miss Sloan. Wanna watch a political theory with Jessica Chastain trying to look and act smart for the millionth time? Me neither. Moving on. Office Christmas Party. Yeah, it's a raunchy Christmas movie. Like, I haven't seen one of those before. Uh, or another raunchy Christmas movie, as I like to call it. Uh, remember the meaning of Christmas? Me neither. Uh, remember the spirit of Christmas? Nah. Uh, now I can remember... Uh, uh, can I remember what this movie is even about? Uh, I guess the clue is in the title. Um, if you like T.J. Miller as much as I do, then you will most likely see this movie because I will definitely see this movie, because I love T.J. Mueller. He's hilarious. Um, but of course, warning, expect sarcasm from Jason Bateman uh, for another typecasted role as that guy again, uh, using the moron's guy to intelligence. Sarcasm. Um, I mean, Office Christmas Party. So, Office Christmas Party. Check it out, all that stuff. A lot of uh, movies coming out this week, but of course, I don't really care about those movies because I'm just waiting for Rogue One, a Star Wars story to come out. And I heard that it doesn't have that scrolling talky, that scrolling um, reading um, title sequence thing, which you know a lot of people are mad about. And it's like, let's just get to the movie. I don't want to hear a lot of words and stuff. If I want to see a lot of words, I just wait till the end, uh, which is the smartest thing Hollywood ever did. It was put all their words at the end of the movie. Anyways, moving on, we got uh, a brand new Flagship Friday video of the week. Um, this one is about Train Girl, and it's a nice little short video that I uh, made with some of the kids um, from Washington Middle School, and without further ado, here is Train Girl.
Oh, what do you want? What are you doing? Well, just leave me alone. I'm calling your mom. What? You're trying to get on a train and go to Florida. Who would want to go to Florida? It's full of old people and weird smells and alligators. Plus, I, I don't know where, I just want to get on the train. I don't know where the train will take me. I just want to go somewhere away from I feel that, I feel that. I've been there before. But it's no reason to get on a train and go away from home. The unknown is very dangerous, you know? You're not, you don't control my life. You know, it's just, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it by myself. So don't do anything for me, or, or you come with me. I can't go with you. You know what, I have a life here too. I have a dog for one thing, and I can't just leave it. I don't think trains allow dogs anymore. I guess I'm going without you. You don't know me! You, well, well, you don't know yourself! Yeah. Is she at it again? I didn't even know what goes on in her head. Is, so is it my turn next week? Yep. <sighs> There's got to be a permanent solution for this. Besides her getting on the train. I don't think she's ever gonna get on that train. You don't know that. When she goes behind the train when the train's moving, she hides somewhere. I don't know. We'll probably see her on Monday like we always do. Maybe we should follow her. You weren't gonna get on it anyway. Listen, we're your friends and we're here for you. Thank you. Do you wanna go to the dog park and pet some dog? Sure, yeah! Friendship is very important. Keep your friends and make them your friends forever. Go friendship and cups. <laughs> That reminds me, have any of you seen um, Girl on a Train with Emily Blunt? Me neither. Moving on, we got some city council and they're talking about, um, there's two things that they're talking about. And one from Parks and Conservation, they're talking all about, um, oh, let me, let me look my cheat sheet. Uh, they're talking about the Kiwanis Park and about a uh, new um, unit complex. Uh, so they're building a new, uh, um, 500 unit complex next to Kiwanis Park and I have a nice little map interpretation so as you can see this is Kiwanis Park right here and just a little bit upper right hand corner just off of uh, Front Street I believe is where they're going to be uh, making the Lambros um, Farron Apartments which is going to be directly across the Missoula Public Library the old one before Missoula Public Library moves across the street on this side to become the new public library with Missoula Community Access Television in it. All right, but this is not about me, it's about city council. So we have a couple clips for you guys, and this is David Sel um, Selvage talking about uh, parking, which um, regardless of a new um, apartment complex coming in, what are we gonna do about all the potential parking that comes in there? The, the parking commission uh, manages most of the property uh, on our behalf for the parking so that it is uh, daytime leased only, uh, no, night, no overnight parking. 
there are the spaces adjoining the park uh, in the lower right hand or lower side of this image uh, are open at all times and available. Uh, but the bulk of the parking is managed through the Parking Commission through leased parking arrangements. Uh, the Lambros Fair and Apartment project uh, is does have an underground parking garage. Okay. Um, we are concerned about that. That is why we're going to continue our relationship with the Parking Commission uh, for lease par daytime lease parking only. All right. So basically what they're saying is... Um, <laughs> um, They'll deal with the parking uh, after uh, the priority is to building a new unit complex. But of course, the city of Missoula is just like, you know, our growth inward policy, we have all these new places that are being built and all this stuff, but nowhere to park. You know, as soon as they built the new um, parking complex on Front Street, um, it filled up. So um, that's one of the things they still have to talk about. And here is um, a new parking, the, so basically, They'll talk to the Parking Commission about uh, this new parking arrangement, and here is uh, Selvage continued uh, talking about parking as well. This could become a long-term challenge if, if we were to not continue to work with the Parking Commission on this. Well, I know parking is a challenge in that area for... Yeah. Place. And, you know, I haven't heard any complaints. I know that it's heavily used on football days, sometimes on basketball when it's nicer. Uh, I think that it's an asset for the entire area. It helps support and sustain this. And You're looking for a most That's all I got. I am. I got truly first. And then. All right. So that's that was basically it. So it, they talked a lot, a little bit about parking, but um, a new uh, facility a unit complex will be built. And it used to be a um, a bank, I believe, that was across from Missoula Public Library. And now they're going to build that unit complex. It's going to be uh, 500 units. It's a lot of new apartments. Um, so that concludes um, um, parks and conservation. Uh, this. Uh, proposal provides for redevelopment of property inside the city, promotes affordable housing, and maximize utilization of existing public infrastructures while protecting public parklands. Also, with the units being built next to the park, recreation is not required by the new complex. The motion passed, and uh, we are another step closer to affordable housing, more affordable housing. Um, and that's Parks and Conservation. Of course, Committee of the Whole, uh, Smith River uh, has become a topic of discussion and where the city of Missoula passed a resolution in concerns over Australian mining company that wishes to start mining adjacent to the Smith River. And here's a little excerpt of our uh, resolution. Whereas Montana's Smith River is our only permanent river and a national treasure due to its gorgeous canyon scenery, renowned for its fishery and abundant wildlife. I'm kind of grandstanding here. And whereas the state of Montana recognized the exceptional environmental, cultural, and economic values of the Smith River with the creation of Smith River State Park, and whereas the Smith River has become an important economic driver in southwestern Montana recreation economy, uh, consisting generally close to $10 million in economic activity, uh, close to $3 million in salary and wages, and approximately $750,000 in state and Ooh, excuse me, local tax revenues. Of course, here is Harlan Wells, and he's say, he, saying he is in support of it if a nearby community, if the nearby community of the Smith River is in support of it. Local government putting their two cents in on other, on other communities and what they're doing, but I, I can definitely see the local impact this one has on, on Missoula, so I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards it. Um, I doing a little bit of research. I notice that the, the the city of White Sulphur Springs is it, at least at one point was in support of this. I was wondering if we've done any outreach to them to see their viewpoints on it before we do this. Um, if if we could do something like that, I definitely would be in support of it. When you say in all right, so. Um that was Harlan Wells, and he would be in support of it if the more localized community was in support of it. And here is uh, another quote, and this is from Heidi West, um, thinks that the that investing in conservation is better for Montana's economy. I think this is very proactive because it protects those industries that are have longevity. They don't 
necessarily seem to be this giant economic boom, but they, they're there for the long term and they support a large amount of people, uh, maybe at a lower level than um, a few at a higher level. Um, so I think this is um, proactive and really makes us a stronger community and a stronger state and a stronger economy in the long run. So. All right. So. Um Think, um, thinking long term as well, um, we have uh, Brian von Losberg uh, talking a, a little bit more about this. Because of the interests of the, the vast number of people I know who, uh, as it is mentioned in the resolution, um, recreate on the Smith. I constantly, every year, it's I've referred to it as sort of a rite of passage for people uh, in terms of their permits, whether people get a permit or not to float it. And then the number of guides I know that guide on the river uh, and have that kind of vested interest. So it's a long-winded way of saying in part, I don't know, I, I, you know, I suspect from the other hearing, White Sulphur Springs is indeed looking at the, the opportunity there for mining as an economic benefit to the region. And for me, the language here doesn't infringe on that expectation of theirs. It gives voice to the concerns that we have in this community about uh, our use of that river as well. It's a it's a resource we all share. So, all right. So that was Brian von Larsberg talking about other uh, potential mining operations in that particular area, and that this um, resolution voices. Um, Concerns, but also just kind of letting people know that uh, we want to protect the river as best we can. And if there's going to be any mining being done, is that we should be one step ahead of that so we can um, avoid any kind of ecological impact as well. Um, moving on, here's Marilyn Mara thinks that this is uh, one of many. This should be a stepping stone for future uh, c conservation um, values of rivers and of course beyond as well because it's not just about uh, where it's located it's about uh, how uh, Missoula can um, throw support for other communities without actually being part of their community. For only the Smith River this one time but I want to be part of a coalition of local governments that speaks up for the, the long-term economic history or long-term economic um, prospects of Montana, which I think are really in our, our public lands, landscapes, wildlife, etc. Um, so it's it's not just this one thing, it's not just us, it's a coalition and it's towards the future. So that's why I support it. I don't All right, so that was Marilyn Marler, Marilyn Marler and to reassess uh, what she uh, what she's saying and um, it's it, it's not about uh, a lot of times if you think about it is like your community is your community but especially a lot of communities that invest in tourism and people coming here we want to provide a, 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 a haven for people to come and enjoy Missoula as a scenery as a destination and by uh, basically throwing support to other people it's kind of like a parallel economics it's like saying it's like hey guys if you like the Clark Fork River you should totally check out the Smith River it is dank that kind of thing. So that's the idea behind saying that we're protecting, we're protecting our own, but at the same time we're saying is like, hey, uh, they protect their own too, and that's what basically what this resolution is all about. And here is um, um, M.J. Derouser, uh, um, De Sorry, uh, he is uh, he joined Montpurg specifically for the Smith River, and Montpurg is a student-run um, organization out of many colleges, and this one's from Montana, hence Montpurg. It is for uh, many different causes and. Uh, Basically, they wander around doing a lot of petitioning for uh, river rights, uh, student rights, and all this stuff. And one of the reasons he joined is because of the Smith River. And this is what M.J. DeRouser said. You know, I, I personally got involved with Montpurg because of the Smith River. Um, you know, I started out collecting public comments to submit to the Department of Environmental Quality. And uh, I, mean, I believe I've collected the most from our organization. And uh, now I am lead intern, and I'm kind of tasked with a lot of the oversight for our Smith River project. Um, you know, we've, we've collected thousands of uh, petition signatures that we've submitted to the Department of Environmental Quality, to the state of Montana, to Governor Bullock, and then now we are currently collecting petitions for this particular resolution. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it uh, progress. Um, All right, so that was M.J. DeRouser. Um, 
talking about all that stuff. Of course, the resolution was put on the consent agenda for future uh, uh, discussion as well. Um, it's just uh, basically for Missoula to say, is like, hey, we want to support the Smith River and protect the Smith River along the way. And that basically does it with that. Um, I have a nice, uh, wonderful new teen talk just for you guys. And it basically, uh, I gotta stop saying basically, basically. Uh, it's all about um, the weather and about how cold it's been and how these kids can stay warm during the winter time. Hi, I'm Neil Wells, and this is Teen Talk. Today on Teen Talk, <laughs> how to deal with the cold and school dances. All right. So, Owen, how do you feel about this cold season? I don't like it. It's cold. <laughs> well, a lot of people, what does that mean? I summed it up. Jackson? Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't bother me that much. I just, I don't like the wind chill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty bad this year, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially right by the Hellgate Canyon. Exactly. Well, then, yeah, yeah, I gotta agree with him. I mean, like, I don't, um, normally I don't, I, you know, I like the cold better than I like the heat, because I really hate the summer so much. I hate the heat of it. Um, I hate, like, the sunlight of it. It's just really awful. But that's, and the cold, you know, I'm a little more used to it than others, so, yeah. Mm. Plus, winter is my favorite season, so there you go. How do you do, deal with the cold, Owen? Eat soup. Do a lot of time watching Netflix and being in a sleeping bag. <laughs> do you eat or drink soup? Mm, depends. It's like the philosophical question. I'd say, I say that if you eat it, you're using a spoon, but if you're drinking it, you're like tilting well, yeah. a bowl. I think mm. I would drink it if there could, if I like loaded up on soup capacity on a spoon, you know? like. Yeah, I guess but you could drink it out of the spoon. The question like, comes: Is it more of a food food? or a drink? We're we're we're. It totally could be both. What about a cup of noodles? See, that's, well, that's, yeah, that's a good point. That's noodles and soup. We're we're totally going <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you deal with the cold, Jackson? I wear the sweatshirt. Mm. <coughs> that it? Pretty much. <laughs> Sounds cold. <laughs> Actually, it does. No, oh, the sweatshirt's pretty warm. I want to feel. Oh, that's nice. Mm. I like the story already. <laughs> How do you deal with the cold? Um, oh, Obviously number of things. Obviously, wear t-shirts. No, I just <laughs> took my thing off. Um, I wear a lot of um, leather. Like, I layer up. So sometimes I'll wear tights or stockings underneath my jeans. I'll wear vests. I'll wear um, flannel. I'll wear leather jackets. And then I like to drink a lot of tea or coffee. I spend a lot of time at Starbucks during the winter season, so. Mm, yeah. All right. We've talked about before. So. Next up, mm -hmm. school dances. Wait, really quick. Before uh, we girl. start with that, do they have their red cups yet? They do, but they have designs on them. Yeah, it's not just a plain red cup this thank, year. Thank God. See, see, we talked about it. They, 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 <laughs> and they, they heard. Th thank you, Starbucks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for Jackson, tuning in. Jackson, they don't care. Mm. Okay. So, so school dances. Do we have any funny stories or anything like yes, that? Yes, I have a funny story. Okay, so this kid that I knew, right? We were at a school dance one time. There's a whole dance. This one time it was him. He was trying to talk to a girl. I'm like, just do it. And he's like, no. And I'm like, just do it. And I'm like, no. And like for 10 minutes, I'm like, do it. I'm going to the punch bar. Screw you. Later. <laughs> just do it. Just do it already. Do it. To be completely He's honest, from... I have never, ever been to a school dance. Because I've, because number one, I've never been interested, and two, I just know for a fact that the music blows. It's all the today's it's like top forty BS. Yeah, yes, yes. This is that's a great. That is a great reason not to go. If they don't play punk or metal, forget it. Uh, Take on not, me on not repeat. Being, not, <laughs> yeah, I love that song. I I only went to one <laughs> dance ever, and that was the eighth grade promotion dance. Oh. 
And I didn't go to that that's either. The same one I was talking. About. Yeah. <coughs> I, I don't, uh, yeah, but I I just don't really like to dance. Yeah. When, when people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that just no? I just, I just don't like to dance very much, so there'd be no point just be like standing around eating food. Exactly. Plus, plus like our the dance that's coming up at our school I know. is expensive. Like it's twelve bucks per person. <laughs> that's but ridiculous. Couples, but couples are twenty bucks, and I'm really lonely, so <laughs> I I don't see myself getting a date anytime soon. Bro power, man. We're not a yes. couple, though. We're not a couple, okay? Disclaimer, not a couple. <laughs> We're okay with gays, okay? I'm okay with gays. Uh, but yeah, and the music, and the music sucks. Cause, yeah, yeah, music. Um, Why only, does it have to be pop and rap? That's just absolutely disgusting. The only, the only good song that I that they played at the promotion dance was Basket Case. <gasps> oh, my Green Day! But, but other than I that, love was, Green other Day. Than, other than that, it was, it was, do, it was bad. So, do we request Blur and the guy yeah, that we Yeah, we wanted to play a song, too, but they never played it. I, I only have one funny story from any dances, and that was um, last year, a couple of friends of mine who were dating, they uh, decided to drag me with them to prom so, oh. as, a, as a third wheel. And they're cool people. It was fun. But What kind of music do they play at prom? Eh, a lot of things. Is it like the modern pop stuff? Some of it, yeah. I'm In that case, screw anyway, prom. I'm probably just going to go to prom because it's prom. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, <laughs> that's, that was kind of what ended up happening. Yeah. I didn't have the coat to go over the vest with uh -oh. uh, <laughs> the rest of my suit, so I had the bow tie, the vest, the dress shirt, and the pants. Um, but <laughs> So I ended up looking like a bartender, <laughs> <laughs> but they had a keg of root beer. <laughs> I ended up just standing by that, just like filling them up. <laughs> so I, I was acting the part and looking the part. <laughs> If I ever, if I end up going to prom, despite the sucky music, um, I might do the same thing. I also had marshmallows, so that was cool. Ooh, yummy. Well, if you don't go, you're going to get picked on about it a lot. Well, I don't care about that. It's worth it. I honestly... So I just wa walk into prom, first thing here. Hello, it's me. Just turn around walk out. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of money yeah, to spend. Yeah, on. yeah. Well, and that, that's, a, that's a giant middle finger to modern music. <laughs> yeah, I hate modern... Well, if anybody walks in, they have to have doves. <laughs> just like, just like, just, just like. like the only out. thing modern allowed at at <laughs> all in my world <laughs> is like Green Day, the metal, and Gorillas. It's like as close to like now, techno if it's, stuff. If it's like the I'm mod, gonna... if it's the mod, if it's like the older bands that are coming out with albums, it's okay. But like the modern, like the actual modern bands are good. Forget it. So, dude, what about I having, think like, that's a... all the time that we have. So I think that's that so. thought for. Oh, save that thought, Owen. <laughs> Uh, Neil, please sign us off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Neil Wells, and this is Team Talk. Thanks for watching. And that was uh, uh, an art clip by our very own Rick Phillips, and that is the, from the Gallery of the Visual Arts, which is at this inside the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. Totally check it out. You have until December 16th, which I believe is next Wednesday. No, next Friday. Okay, anyways, um, moving on, we got some 
events to talk about. So let's talk a bit, little bit about what's going on here and around Missoula. First of all, uh, kicking off today, it's all about a Western uh, tip-off classic. I wouldn't say kicking off, more like tipping off for today's events is at the University of Montana. The Adams Center and the University of Montana are hosting the third annual Western uh, A Tip-Off Classic, quote unquote. Uh, the event attracts 600 athletes and over 2,300 spectators as teams show off their basketball skills on the court. So it's basketball. Uh, the third annual competition, they said that again, um, will run December 9th and December 10th. Um, the boys and girls teams from Western Montana high schools will travel from Corvallis, Butte, Dillon, Stevensville, Hamilton, Frenchtown, Columbia Falls, Polson, Whitefish, and Browning. The tournament will run um, 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. Friday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday. This is a non-elimination tournament, and I believe um, it. I believe that there should be scouts there as well because it would be a smart idea for scouts to show up to these kind of events and then you, this is a perfect time for um, a lot of smaller schools to kind of show uh, that a lot of their um, players are uh, able to be in the big league so maybe we might see uh, some of these guys playing for the University of Montana someday so you can check that out starting at noon today and 11 a.m. tomorrow so you can check that out happening pretty much all day today if you love basketball then you're gonna love this little red truck vintage markets um, European Christmas it has nothing to do with the MCT just so you guys know because they have the little red trucks that travel across uh, internationally but of course uh, I kept okay it's like uh, if you guys want to play a drinking game you just have to wait for me to say but of course and you can you probably be drunk by now anyways Missoula County Fairgrounds is hosting little red truck vintage market and it's European Christmas so their second annual European Christmas um, enjoy two days of epic vintage ho um, homemade and holiday shopping uh, artisanal baked goods um, hot beverages I'm, I'm totally botching this um, uh, savory food and live music and Santa Claus you can't have a vintage uh, Christmas market without Santa Claus or maybe Krampus because Europeans like Krampus um, three <laughs> buildings are full of vintage goodness to explore plus an open air market with uh, warming bonfires warming hot spiced wine which is German and uh, tw twinkling Christmas lights don't miss the magic and the vintage market will be happening uh, 5 p.m. today uh, at the Missoula County Fairgrounds and also tomorrow. Um, tonight, uh, the Tube of Christmas is happening at the Southgate Mall at 7 p.m. If you guys haven't already watched my interview with Gary Gillette last week, um, then I'll give you the rundown once again. Uh, the annual event takes uh, tubas from around Missoula um, and tuba enth enthusiasts to perform this heavy metal inspired uh, Yule Town celebration with Mr. Gillette as your tuba Santa, ushering you in into the music of Christmas. Uh, show up early because uh, the mall fills up to the brim with people wanting to see Tuba Christmas at the mall. Start at 7 p.m. and uh, at Sears, 4 p.m., the tubas will gather up and do some practicing. So if you're a tuba player, euphonium player, um, then you can totally join them at 4 p.m. at uh, Sears, the old Sears. So there, that's where you can leave all your stuff and you can perform with uh, the Tuba Santa's Tuba Christmas at 7 p.m. at the Southgate Mall. Uh, and of course, I have a really cool graphic I, I kind of want to show you. Uh, this something that really just kind of popped, and I just wanted to show it you, this nice little graphic. It's a great poster, and it's all about if I ain't drunk, then it ain't Xmas. And it's a party with a walking corpse syndrome, uh, blessed doom, um, switch off safety and resurgence after a long election season. Family Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Take a break from all that and get drunk with your favorite Montana metal bands. Drink specials and debauchery all night long. And this is at the Dark Horse starting at 8 p.m. tonight. And I just wanted to throw it to that just real quick because I thought that was a really good poster. Um, if you guys want to check it out, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. But of course, here are all your music events happening uh, throughout the weekend. And starting off with uh, Pat and Charlie with Saturday Night Live Music Series at Imagination Brewing Company. Um, it's tonight, Friday, even though it's like Saturday night. Uh, that's probably the name of the band. Anyways, you have the Irish music session happening at the Union Club every uh, Friday at 6 p.m. They do uh, Irish music. People just hang out um, in a circle and play some folk Irish music. Um, Jeff Flake is playing at the, uh, oh, gotta stop scrolling. It will be um, Missoula Brewing Company at 6 p.m., which is uh, off of reserve. So you have to go quite a ways to get there. Western African Drum and Dance. 
dance at the Top Hat Lounge. So uh, learn a little bit of African drum and dance. Uh, they usually do this at the Senior Center. This might be something different. It might be the same organization that put it, puts it on, but it's going to be at the Top Hat at 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, Family Friendly Friday is also at uh, the Top Hat, which I believe is um, Jabara, uh, Jabe uh, Bara, they uh, were on our show, and um, you can watch the past interview from back in the day. Just type in DJ EBE Bara, B A R A, uh, after wake up, and you can totally find it. Of course, Southgate Mall again, 7 p.m. Missoula Community Choir presents Peace, Joy, and Love at St. Anthony's Church tonight at 7:30 p.m. They have their community choir. Um, if I, if I, okay, then of course, if I am drunk, then an Annex Smith is happening at the Dark Horse. Um, Graveyard, uh, Girl Scouts, Bra, and more is at Old Beck BFW, post 209 at 9 p.m. It's rock music. Dead Hipster presents I Love the 90s Dance Party at the Bailander. And, of course, if you guys missed Dead Hipster last Thursday night, the last Dead Hipster ever will be um, December 29th, and they just announced it, and it'll be the very last Dead Hipster. It's a Thursday night party, which has been going on since 2007. It's ridiculous. One of the most ongoing DJ, just hangout stuff. And um, Showdown is happening at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30 p.m. tonight. Joan Zen at the Union Club, and Jameson and the Sword Seeds at the Top Head Lounge tonight at 10 p.m. And that is your Friday music events. Um, Saturday um, events, they have the Christmas Bazaar at St. Regis Community Center, and it is, uh, apparently it's a music, they're gonna have music, rock music, start at 9 a.m. You have uh, Jeff Carroll, um, let's, let me just see if I have, oh, here's all your Saturday events. Um, MIS, Missoula International School, garage sale for global learning, new, uh, Missoula International School property, um, former Pro Build building and roller rink, um, the Hive. Um, this is a massive garage sale organized by the uh, Missoula International School. Middle schoolers um, featuring clothing, gear, tools, kitchen goods, vintage items. Um, just a nice little garage sale for you guys to check out. It's starting at 8 a.m. and it goes until. Oh, it goes until the afternoon. So you guys can totally check that out. It's happening tomorrow. Starting in at 8 a.m. Of course, early bird specials start at 7.30. Um, Christmas is Bazaar, again, at the St. Regis uh, Community Center. Uh, arts, crafts, and all that stuff. You can call Elaine Wolf at 242-0317. Again, that's uh, Elaine Wolf at 242-0317 for the Christmas Bazaar at St. Regis Community Center. Uh, of course, last day, not vanishing. We'll be vanishing from the Missoula Art Museum. So to, tomorrow will be last chance at the Missoula Art Museum to check out that art exhibit. It's from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and you get a final um, look at not vanishing, um, which is it's very ironic the title. But of course, you get to talk to the artists and you get a tour of this art. One last hurrah before it's gone from the ma'am forever. Well for some time, who, who knows. Um, downtown carriage rides, so this is something that's happening every weekend long. It's carriage rides starting at 11 a.m. and goes into about 4 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, so if you wanna get riding a horse-drawn carriage every weekend leading up till Christmas, you can enjoy free carriage rides and it is provided by the Paws Up Ranch and just a nice little um, adventure, just hanging out and you just uh, meet them at uh, East Pine Street across from Adventures, Adventure Cycling. So basically the new art park by the MAM, that's where they're gonna have uh, the pickup and drop-offs for the carriage ride, so you can totally check that out starting at 11 a.m. Saturday or Sunday, or you can do both. Um, Unity March, Missoula uh, County Courthouse at the UM Oval, um, I'm just, check just checking the time. Um, an all-inclusive, nonpartisan, multi-generation march for equality, love, and human rights, race, gender, organizations, all that great stuff. Uh, they will have a peaceful march from the Missoula County Courthouse to the University of Montana Oval, and you can um, join for the march at the Volunteer Fair at the University Center. Sign up, get involved, take action. So that starts at 1 p.m. Um, at the Missoula Courthouse, or you can just go to the UC Center, or University Center Center, as most people call it, um, and go to their uh, nice little uh, volunteer fair and learn how you can take action. And here are some of the, uh, let's see, skip that. Um, here are some of the Saturday night events. Um, you have uh, Jeff Carroll at Missoula Brewing Company. Again, uh, you have the basement, as in base, 
displays playing whatever at monks at 9 p.m uh charcoal squid no fancy correspondence and more at the palace absolutely with chris moon at the badlander uh cash for junkers at union club uh the sunrise saloon um troublesome is playing there aaron um cam and the one drops um, is playing at the Top Hat Round, Top Hat Lounge. It's a reggae band at 10 p.m. and these are all your nightly music events for your Saturday. And let's throw it to, uh, let's go to Sunday. I have two things for Sunday. It's Missoula's Holiday Maid Fair, and that's at 11 a.m. at the University of Montana, the tenth year with over 190 local and regional artists. Missoula Holiday Maid Fair will be the biggest one yet. This alternative crafts and fair offers a variety of vendors for all different types of shoppers from adventure gear, cer um, ceramics, uh, photography, jewelry, wear bands, all sorts of great stuff happening starting at 11 a.m. at the University of Montana. I believe it's at the Adams Center because I think they've done it there many times before, but you can always double check at MissoulaEvents.net. And finally, you have the Jubilation Handbell Choir. They play little bells and each one's toned differently and they do uh, Christmas um, music as well. Um, they join the Jubilation Handbell Choir as they play the concert of holiday favorites, guest instruments, and choir add the holiday cheer. The concert is free and it's at 4 p.m. on Sunday at First United Methodist Church. And yeah, I think there's Jazz on the River at Imagination Brewing Company at 5 p.m. The Ed Norton Big Band at the Montana Winery will be at 6 p.m. on Sunday. So that is all you guys need to know about what's happening this weekend. There's a lot going on this weekend, but you won't know unless you go out and check it out. But of course, if you want to have a little taste, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net um, to learn more information to watch all these wonderful videos and interviews. I had an interview with Mark Moss today. They're doing Tell Us Something next Tuesday at the Wilma. You can totally check that out um, anytime. And of course, you can see past podcasts and past videos by logging on to MCAT.org. To find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula as I rub the sand from my eyes. You can go to MCAT.org and of course Saturday animation drop-in is tomorrow at five, at 1 p.m. until 5 p.m. and it's for ages 9-ish to 13 and it is a great representation. It's a great uh, skill set for a kid to pick up a new skill while at the same time um, getting a chance to have a Saturday afternoon to do um, Christmas shopping for your kids because um, nothing is harder than shopping for Christmas presents with your kids. Why not drop them off here at MCAT 500 North Higgins? You can call us at 542-6228 but you can it's an easy drop off. You drop them off with 10 bucks or you can do a half day for five dollars it's great and uh thanks again for mark moss for joining us the unlikeliest of places is the topic for tell us something happening next tuesday night at 7 p.m um it's a buy buy to try monthly series um, where they invite um local um speakers to talk about their stories based on the topic and this topic is the unlikeliest of places so for wake up missoula i'm scott ramp and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have be safe. Travel a little bit lower, um, slower on the speed limit because this um, it's going to be a little snowy up and around Missoula, but it's going to be beautiful. And I like I said in the beginning of the show, uh, the snow looks very serendipitous. So if you guys are planning things special, that um, this weekend, today, right now, after hearing me say serendipitous uh, without uh, me um, um, pausing too much or going um. <laughs> All right, so I'm done with the show. So um, goodbye, guys. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. <laughs>